Imagine a world where a single hormone wields the power to save lives. In today's episode, we are diving deep into a topic that impacts millions. A hormone that can be a matter of life and death for some. It's the unsung hero in the fight against a modern day epidemic, diabetes. And is a silent superhero working tirelessly behind the scenes. I'm your host, Dr. Padmara Murthy, and today we're going to unravel the science behind one of the most critical players in our body's intricate dance of survival, insulin and its role in our body. Picture this, you've just indulged in a carb-loaded feast, rice, bread, potatoes and more. As your body digests this culinary delight, it breaks down these carbohydrates into glucose, the primary fuel of our bodies. Think of glucose as the energy currency of your body. It's the end game for carbohydrates, fats and proteins, all converging into this vital molecule, which is then converted into the ultimate energy currency, ATP or the adenosine triphosphate. But here's where insulin takes the stage. Produced by the pancreas, it's like the conductor of a symphony orchestrating the utilization and storage of this precious molecule, which is glucose. In the insulin, once in the blood, reaches various organs and has its effect on them. In the liver, insulin guides glucose inside, where glucose is either used up for energy production or it is converted and stored as glycogen for future use. Insulin supercharges the process of this glucose transport across the cell membranes by more than 10 And the second region where the glucose gets used up is the muscles. Your muscles eagerly take in the glucose and amino acids, using them to build functional protein and power your every move. Excess glucose in the muscle is also converted into glycogen. And let's not forget about the adipose tissue or the fat tissue, our body's long-term energy storage wall. Insulin encourages it to soak up excess glucose and fatty acids from the bloodstream, creating the triglycerides for long-term storage. On average, the postprandial, meaning your post-meal blood glucose may rise up to 120 to 140 milligrams per deciliter. But thanks to insulin, it's brought back to normal within about two hours. The muscle claims roughly 70% of this glucose for its continuous energy needs. But what about when you are not eating? Well, that's when your body gets cracked and in the presence of another hormone released by our pancreas named glucagon, the liver taps into its glycogen reserves, breaks it down and releases glucose into the bloodstream to maintain that steady blood sugar level. Another way to maintain that sugar level or the glucose level in our body while we are fasting is by another process called gluconeogenesis. Genesis meaning something new, where your body is manufacturing new glucose from non-carbohydrate sources like glycerol from triglycerides, that is fats and the amino acid from the muscle protein. So these two are being used to create new glucose. It's like an ingenious glucose production factory, mainly happening in the liver. 90% of the gluconeogenesis occurs in the liver, but some also occurs in the kidney. Now the average fasting blood glucose concentration is between 80 to 90 milligrams per deciliter. Even during prolonged fasting or starvation, your body doesn't abandon you. Fuel utilization shifts from glucose to ketones. Ketones are produced by the liver from the fatty acids. So in the absence of food or in the absence of dietary carbohydrates, ketones are being produced by the body by utilizing the fatty acids. This metabolic switch or from glucose to ketones as the energy source helps in reducing the oxidative stress and inflammation in your body and has numerous other benefits too. So this is one of the benefits of prolonged fasting. 
In addition to the regulation of glucose, insulin also plays a role in other areas of the body. Insulin may be involved in building muscle following sickness or injury via the transportation of amino acids to the muscle tissue, which in turn will help in repairing the muscular damage and increases the size and strength of the muscle. It also helps in the synthesis of lipids. Insulin also enhances memory and learning capabilities of the brain. We'll delve into each of these aspects of insulin in our future episodes. We'll explore insulin's role in other parts of our body from brain to kidney, skin to the endothelium, the inner lining of our uh, blood vessel and many other topics like what happens to insulin during fasting etc. But until then, remember, insulin isn't just a hormone, it's a guardian of your energy, a conductor of life's symphony within.